Well, the Cleveland Browns on a field that was torn up by someone who decided to drive around on there, and you could still see the physical scars on the turf. The Buccaneers were going to come in, supposedly, and put some more scars on the turf in the last game before Deshaun Watson's return. The Buccaneers coming off of their bye, building momentum. They'd won two in a row. They had the big win in Germany. We just All the signs were pointing to a Tampa Bay uprising. I thought it was going to be a long day for the Cleveland Browns. I think anybody capable of objective, rational thought would have expected a long day for the Cleveland Browns. But to their credit, touchdown late. You agreed to, yeah, you know, you know where they are. I mean, come on. You don't just suddenly change, but sometimes you do. They tie the game up late. They win the game in overtime, 23-17. to Great throw and catch from Jacoby Brissett to Amari Cooper to set up the Nick Chubb touchdown run to win the game. And, And good for Jacoby Brissett. His last game as the starter, it didn't go as well as it looked like it was going to. Remember that Thursday night game, week three? I know you do, when they beat the Steelers. And Sims and I actually were having the conversation. How many wins does it take for Jacoby Brissett to derail the presumption that Deshaun Watson just walks right back in and takes over? Is it six? Is it seven? Is it eight? Doesn't matter because they didn't win nearly enough. And, of course, it is Deshaun Watson. But a great way to finish and a great way to leave the door open a crack. To get that fourth win, so if they do get hot under Sean Watson, there's still a chance, Miles, that your Cleveland Browns will get to the playoffs. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's still a chance, but is there really? I mean, I don't know. I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I guess it's the Cleveland in me that's not uh, really feeling that very much. But you know, I, I think Jacoby Brissett did an admirable job as the starting quarterback of the Browns. I think he did a better job than I think he, I'll put it this way. I think he did as good of a job as could be expected for somebody in those circumstances with the career history that he had. I, I think the Kevin Stefanski for the most part made the most of Jacoby Brissett as a starting quarterback. And, you know, I, I think that maybe some team in the 2023 offseason could possibly see Jacoby Brissett as a decent bridge quarterback. I mean, it, it at least stands to reason that a team could think that. For me, you know, it was maybe a team that's drafting a young QB can look at Jacoby Brissett and say, you know, this guy can at least pilot the ship as we need this young guy to learn. And when somebody else takes over, we know he's going to still be a great teammate. So it was nice to see him be able to lead that drive at the end of the game where David Njoku makes a catch of his life in the end zone, grabbing that thing one-handed, and then to see the, the Browns go to overtime, and then they eventually win it. That's that's a nice win just as a program for a Cleveland Browns team that really, really, really needed something positive at this point. Well, and Brissett recently said he thinks he's shown enough that he can be a starter. And I think he means more than a bridge starter. Now, the problem is there's only 32 of these jobs, and you have to find somebody that is willing to entrust it to you. He's been around for a while. He's played some good football. He's had some chances. It's just never worked out. But, you know, it's kind of the the Geno Smith factor. If you just hang around long enough, the, your ship is going to come in somewhere. If you just keep plugging away and you keep getting it done, maybe you do get a chance to show what you can do. Um, and we, we got to see it from Jacoby Brissett. And I thought he was steady in a difficult circumstance. And we still may see him again. Look, there's no guarantee to Sean Watson. Sean Watson plays right. very – not. it's not physical per se. One of the criticisms Sims always has of him is he treats every play like it's the last play of the Super Bowl. And so he puts himself in a tough spot. He could get banged up. He could get injured. I mean, how anybody can get injured, we know that. But he could be back. Who knows? Uh, But somebody will have an opportunity to get Jacoby Brissett in the offseason, and we'll see. That that, that, uh, carousel is going to fire up before you know it with first coaches, then quarterbacks. And it seems to be an annual thing now where veteran quarterbacks are always on the move. And one of the guys who could be on the move after this year, whether to retirement or another team, Tom Brady, it felt like it was moving the right way for the Bucs, as I mentioned. And uh, just just a stunner to see them at five and six, to see them lose that game, a game they should have won. Be interesting to see what he has to say tonight on his Let's Go podcast about that one. No reason why they should have lost that game, uh, but they did. And uh, prior to this game, how about this? Brady had never lost a game at all, ever, when leading by seven or more points in the final two minutes. Had never lost under circumstances like that. And uh, 
Yeah, look, they can get back on the horse fairly quickly. They still, all they have to do is win that division, and they're still in first place in the NFC South, and they'll be the four seed. But it's a reminder that just because they get there doesn't mean they're going to show up and start taking care of business. I mean, if you can't go to Cleveland and win when you've got two weeks to get ready for it, I'm not prepared to say that these teams in the NFC that are going to have high positioning on the playoff tree are going to be ready to just, you know, buckle. And and look, Miles, here's the reality. If they're the four seed, they're going to get the Cowboys Mm -hmm. at home in the playoffs, most likely. And I don't think it's going to be the same outcome as 19-3 to Tampa Bay wins as it was back in week one, if there's a rematch. I, I don't either. I mean, those two teams are going to be completely different in January. Uh, but, you know, it's funny because the Buccaneers have now gone to Pittsburgh and gone to Cleveland. So the two AFC North teams that they have to play on the road and they've lost both games. And in both of those games, you're kind of like, wait a minute. Why, why aren't the Bucs separating themselves from this team? Right. I mean, the, the watching the second half yesterday against the Browns, I'm thinking, my gosh, what the Buccaneers should be able to separate themselves from this team. They just kept leaving the door open. And finally, the Browns decided to kick that darn thing in. And when you see that from a team that has Brady, I mean, you, know, you read off that stat that's, you know, Brady, the team and the never losing and all of that stuff. And when it's that late in the game, and that's usually the kind of stat that the Browns are on the opposite end of, you know, somebody's doing that to the Browns. And it's like, it's the first time since blah, blah, blah. That's something this crazy has happened. Like it did with the jets earlier this year, which still like eats at my craw. So I think when you see the Bucks and where they are right now, you there's a lot of reason to be concerned because they can't seem to just put teams away like they need to. I mean, they did have that comeback against the Los Angeles Rams a couple weeks ago, but that's not one of the better teams in the league, and they were at home. So I think it's kind of hard to feel like, even though that's Tom Brady, and even though all they need to do is get into the tournament, right? I feel like it's hard to think that this is a Buccaneers team that is truly going to be able to get into the postseason and compete for a championship. Quite possibly also they were looking past the Browns. They took the Browns lightly because the road gets very difficult. They have the Saints on Monday Night Football, and the Saints have been pretty good against the Buccaneers in recent years. Then – at the 49ers, Tom Brady goes home to play a 49ers team oh, that is fun. damn good. Then it's the Bengals the week after that. So three tough games, and they go to Arizona. They finish with the Panthers and the Falcons. The Panthers, they, 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 they pulled off the ultimate feat yesterday where they win and everybody else in the division loses. That's the best day possible. And they're back in this. Yeah. Every time we leave them dead at the side of the road, the Panthers find a way to get back into it there they are at four and eight and they could pick off the falcons who they beat and the buccaneers who they beat unbelievable unbelievable the the panthers could win that division and host the cowboys most likely in the wild card round of the playoffs and then get uh, and who knows who knows once you're in once you get a ticket to the party who knows and the less that people expect of you the more loose and free you can play and you can Even the Panthers, probably not. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.